Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. I'm really excited to do a little series here on Svelte Kit. So this is a, another JavaScript framework. And to be honest, out of all of them, this one seems to be the easiest and my favorite one so far. So I'm gonna do quite a bit in Svelte. So we're building out this movie database app where we load up all the popular movies here. So we're doing an API request and we have these cards here so we can get a detailed view when we click in them. So there we go. And we got page routings and page animations. So let's go back here. And I also added a little search functionality. Now, again, you can add more to this. Uh, I just kind of dabbled into the API to give you an example of how SvelteKit works. But look at that, animations everywhere. So let's search up Spider-Man or something. And look at that, boom, the original one, the best one. So let's get going. All right, so what we need to do is go in our VS Code. And all you need to do is make sure you have um, Node.js installed. Okay, once you have Node.js installed, uh, you can open up the terminal. You can go up here, new terminal. So let's pop this open here and I'll just navigate to another folder here very quickly. We'll go to documents, there we go. And we're gonna run a little command here. Uh, so let me, let me just show you. So here are the docs, they're pretty good. Now, it's not fully released. I believe it's still in alpha version or beta version. So they haven't even released um, version one yet, uh, but that's okay. You, you can find most of the stuff um, uh, that you need to get going. So anyway, uh, to get started, basically we have to run this command npm init svelte at next, and then you can name it whatever you want. So in this case, they did my app. So I'm just gonna change this to uh, movie db like that, hit enter, okay? So let that install. So it's gonna ask you a couple of things like need to install the following pack packages, create svelte next. So just type y for that and hit Yes, so you can choose um, basically if you want a template, they give you like a demo project or a skeleton project, which is gonna be empty. So we're gonna go empty. I, I find it always easier if everything, you, you don't have any file structures or anything already set up and just kind of go from there. Uh, you can do TypeScript, I'm gonna choose no for that. Uh, ES code linting, I'm gonna say yes. And prettier, I'm gonna say yes. Okay, so there we go. Now you need to navigate over there. So CD movie DB, and then you need to do an npm install and then npm run dev. So I don't like to do CD personally. I like to do file, open folder and just navigate to it. So I, I clear up my file structure here. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to, where is it? Documents and just go to movie DB and select folder. And then I'm gonna reopen up my terminal and run npm install and then we wait. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -da. Tequila. Okay, so once, whilst that's loading up, let's just kind of take a look at the file structure here. So we have a config.js here. You don't really need to touch that. Uh, package.json, which shows you all the packages that you install, that you need. Uh, prettier ink, if you want to um, customize this for um, code formatting. And I should also mention now that you need a couple of extensions. Actually, this is probably the main one that you need. So Svelte for VS Code. Make sure you install that and then you need to copy this over. So make sure you also have Prettier installed. Uh, you need to copy this text from here. All right, the one that they have there. And then you can just go over to the file structure. Let's go in here and let me actually make that the bigger size so you can see a bit better. So just open up the source here and routes and just go to one of these files here. So Prettier is gonna detect it. So if you click here is Velt, see? And what you can do is go over to configure files association for Svelte. That's not the one. I lied to you. Um, was this one? Yeah, this one and you're gonna have a section here called Svelte. So you can just paste that code in there and then you're gonna have nice formatting. So anyway, that's it. All right, so basically, I mean, you don't need to touch any of these really. Um, node modules, that's where all your packages get get installed. Uh, ESLint, again, that's just linting. Git ignore, so if you're gonna put this up on GitHub, um, yeah, it's gonna ignore all the files like environment variables, so any sensitive information, the node modules and stuff like that. 
And there is a static here where I guess you could put in your images and videos and stuff like that. But anyway, nothing's really important here except for the source folder. So let's open that up. So again, if you've never worked with JavaScript frameworks before, the way this works is um, basically you have a HTML file and then you have a div here. And in, in this div, basically um, all your HTML gets injected into. So everything is basically dynamic. Now SvelteKit is an SSR, so server-side rendering. Now, if you don't know too much about that, I'm, I mean, don't worry. It's equivalent to Next.js or Nux.js, but basically what you wanted, uh, what it's used for, so a SPA, a typical SPA is, um, everything is done through JavaScript, everything's generated through JavaScript. So it's not really optimized that well for SEO and for accessibility, whereas SSR, the server-side rendering, so uh, you have like proper HTML being rendered out on the screen for you. Okay, anyway, doesn't really matter that much. You can probably make a whole video on it later on uh, with all the nooks and crannies. Okay, so in the source folder, let's just run this first because I've been just rambling for too much, six minutes. Haven't said one, one good thing. Uh, so npm run dev, that's how you open up the live server. And it says port is already used because I'm running it on my other screen. So let me close that up and see why. There we go. So I'm just going to go here and do npm run dev again. And this should work now. Perfect. So let's head over here and do a little refresh. And there we go. Welcome to Svelte. If we look at the source folder here, we just have an app.html and a route. So we have an index felt, and as you can see, this is what's being rendered out on the screen. Perfect. So again, it doesn't look that much different from just writing normal HTML. So I can add a button here. I can say click to close or whatever and hit save. And look at that, it just works, magically works. So what if I want to add some styling in here? Well, just add a style sheet right here. And I can select the P tag and do color or increase the font size of this to two rem and hit save. And look at that, it's super big. Now the cool thing is that the styling here is, is scoped. So if I create another file here called maybe about.svelte, um, I can just select the, the P tag from there and it's not gonna cause any issues. So that's really nice. All right, so that's kind of the basic uh, of this. So how do we, Let's say we want to navigate to another page. How do we do that? Um, super simple. Just go to the routes and create a new file called about.svelte, just like that. So in here, I can just add h1 saying, welcome to the about page, just like that. And that's all I need to do. So now from here, maybe change this button over to an a tag. I can just do slash about like that. And that's it. So let me actually add some text to this. Go to about and hit save. So click there and boom, welcome to the about page. So as you can see, it's super, super simple, super quick uh, compared to React and any other frameworks out there where you have to import uh, link tags and hook up all, all, all the other packages and crap like that. So it just makes sense. It's just like writing old uh, vanilla JavaScript and HTML and CSS. Okay, now how do we actually get some functionality up in here? Um, I just want to give you a quick example. Uh, so what we can do is go to the top here. I'll just work in the index svelte. Um, how do I create like a state, like a variable and update it? So let's say here, I do want to add that button back and do an increment like that. So I'll just add another H1 here. Welcome to, let's just change this to number um, and I'll add the dynamic data in here. So let's say count. All right. So that's it. You just say let count, set it equal to zero, zero. <laughs> and then in here, all you need to do is add some curly brackets and just add that variable in there and hit save. And look at that number zero showing right up. So it's just that simple. No need to use use state or this state or any of it's just a simple variable and just add it to your HTML right there. Okay, so how can we hook up like an event listener or a click or something like that? Well, really easy. We can just make a normal function called increment button like that. All right, there we go. 
And in here, all you need to do is say count plus equals to one. That, that's it. <laughs> so now you can go over to the button that you want to add uh, this functionality to. So here, and all you need to do is do on, and then you have all of these different events accessible for you. So in this case, I want on click, on click like that. Now you can remove the quotation marks. You don't need them. You can just do a curly brackets and just add increment button and hit save. Let's go back, click, 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 and look at that. It just magically works. All right, so that's kind of the basic basics of it. So I want to stop here and just start building out our application because we get to see all of the other features uh, that Svelkit offers us whilst we're building this out. Okay, so let's clean everything up. We'll get rid of the index Svelte. We'll get rid of the about here. Just delete that. Um, and let's start adding some stuff to this. Okay, so let's start building out Let's do the API request for the movie database. So we need to get an API key for this. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as just copying it over. So the one we're looking for is go on Google and search the movie DB. Okay. So click on here and then you can do a login or join. So sign up for this. It's quite simple. Just an email and username. Uh, and then uh, I forgot mine. But once you, I forgot my login information, but once you log in, it sh should show up with an API key, it should be there in your account. So it looks like this. I'll show you mine. Don't copy it over. I'm going to delete it by the time this video is up. So don't even try. Uh, but here's how mine looks like. I'll copy it over. Just add it in here in the VS codes. So that's mine. Okay. So you're looking for something like that. Cool. So. Let's do an API request. So how do we do that? Well, what we want to do is do it here on the index. Uh, H so basically on our homepage, right? When we visit the homepage, we want to call for the API request. Cool. Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it. So if you could import something, so if we do a script folder here, we can import something called on mount from Svelte. So this is kind of like, um, I think it's the same name in React, if I believe so. Uh, but basically what this says is, hey, when the component mounts, uh, fetch some data for me. Now, the, the thing with this is that it's not really using uh, the SSR. So it's not using any server-side rendering. So to do server-side rendering in Svelte, we need to create a script uh, with a context here of module, right? So just add context module here. I need to change my keyboard that changed to UK and it's detecting the quotation marks as an at sign for some reason. Okay. So that's it. So just add quotation marks and say module. All right. So anytime you do API request, do it in script context module. Perfect. So here, what you need to do is do an export async function load. So basically you're doing a, a function that's asynchronous. So basically it's going to wait for the data to be available before, uh, you do anything else with it. Again, you're going to be using this hundred times, uh, whenever you're doing any API requests. So you're going to be used to just export async function load. And what Svelte offers you in here is something called fetch. All right. So just like the fetch API. So in here we can do a const response and we can do an await fetch. All right. So in here, basically you want to add your URL. Uh, so if we go to movie database, uh, let's see the movie DB API docs should be here somewhere. Let's click here. Uh, da, da, da. Where did I see it? Uh, might not, uh, this may be the one actually. Now let's search popular here. There we go. Popular. Get popular. It's so movie slash popular. If we go to try out, they should give you a, a link. Here we go. So let me scroll in so you can see the movie, blah, 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 popular. And then you add your API key in there. 
Okay, so let's copy that over. I'm gonna add back text like that, paste it in there. And then here where it says API key, I'm just gonna get rid of that. And then add curly brackets and dollar sign there. And then I can add my API key. Now we're gonna remove this because we're gonna use environment variables soon. And that's just a way for, for the client side not to be able to access this uh, text right here. Actually, I don't need to do the curly brackets now. You can just add it like that, but we're gonna add it after just to keep this information hidden from uh, being able to be accessed. We're gonna be using environment variables. Okay, let's move on. So what we wanna do now is, so this is gonna do a fetch. It's gonna get all the available information off that page. And then we're gonna save it to this variable called data. So we're gonna do an await again, res.json. So we're gonna format it to JSON. Perfect. So now what we need to do is say if the response is okay. So if we got that data back successfully, okay, so from this response here, then I'm gonna return. And what the script module allows you to do is return some props from here and then it's gonna be available in your no normal script file here. So just follow along for now and you're gonna and you're gonna see what I mean. So I can say props here and I can add any name I want. In this case, I'm gonna say popular. I'm just gonna add the data.result in there. So whatever I get from this API. And that API re uh, returns a data that has all the, all the movies on the dot results on it. Okay, so we're basically fetching it here returning this prop, we give it a name, any name we want, and then we add the data to it. Let me see if I can do a console log here of data so you can see what's going on. Console log data and hit save. So let's go back up here, localhost inspect. Let's see. Okay. I'm not getting a, I'm not getting a message back, but that's all right. Oh, we got an error. Okay. What's the error? Let me restart this because I deleted some files. Let's run this. Okay, no errors now. Let's go back here, do a refresh, inspect this, mother lover. And there we go. We have an object and look at that. Page one, results. And in results, we have all the movies. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm doing pop, uh, popular and adding data.results in there. Okay, so you export the prop here and then you have it available here by just doing export let popular. Okay, the name that you gave here. And there we go. And now you can use it in your index.html's index.html in your html files. So if I go here and just do a pop, popular I'm just going to console get out here for you. console log popular. Okay, and there we go, look at that. We have all of our data available. Cool, awesome. So now that we have all of our data available, what we can do is just make a new component uh, that's its specific function is to just display the cards for us. So let's go over here uh, in the source folder and just create a new folder and we're gonna call this components. Compo components like that. So we have our routes, which are our pages, right? So if we want to make a new one, maybe a movie details, we'll add that in there. And then we have components, which we can add to the, each individual page. Okay. So let's go over to components and we'll make a new one. Let's call this, uh, let's call this, what should we call this? Let's call this popular. Let's call it popular movies, new file, popular movies.svelte. Okay, cool. So how do I render this component out and on our page? So I'll do a H1 popular movies. Now you can imagine you have multiple components, popular movies, you have uh, highly rated movies. So you would create a component for each one of those and then just add it in your index down here. So how do we do it? Well, it's quite simple. We go over to our index felt, 
we'll go here and we'll just say import popular movies from dot dot slash components slash popular movies and then down here so we'd have our HTML down here I'll just create a section for this like that and I can just render it out like this popular movies let's take a look look at that popular movies cool so now we can keep this index page very clean and just make components uh, separate small pieces of components uh, to keep our code and file structure clean. Okay, that's cool. So we have our popular movies here. All right, so we can add all of our data in here. Uh, but what I want to do here in the popular movies is to create a card system. So I want all the, I basically want to loop over each movie and just add a nice styling to it and some, just render out the components dynamically. Uh, the the movies dynamically. So how do we do that? Well, what we can do is we'll keep this popular movies here. We'll just rename this to H3. Let's do H3 here. So what I want to do is create a div here called popular movies like that. And basically, I want to render out each movie here. So div it's a movie, right? But I don't want to do like movie, 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 movie like that. All right. I want to, you could do that, but it's just not practical. You'd have to be insane. Um, but even if we do it like that, how do I get the data, this popular data to render out down here in this popular movies component? How can I get data from the parent to the child? Well, kind of the same way we did it up here with the props, where we did props, right? And then export let popular, and we have it available in this component, in this page. So what you can do is go here, popular movies, and you can set this equal to here. You can add a name movie or movies equal to popular like that. And now you would have this available in here if you add a script tag and you do the same export, let, and whatever name you gave it. So in this case, movies like that. And now you have it available in here. So if I can do console log, I'll just do movies and I'll grab the first one. So it's an array. So we can grab the first element like that. So there we go. Look at that. We get a console log of the first movie. So that's how you have it available. Now, there's a shorthand version to this. So if you name it the same way, if you name the name that you're giving uh, equal to the, uh, the, I guess the, what is it called? The variable name, uh, then you can just get rid of this movies here. So if you have like popular equal to popular, then you can just get rid of this and just keep curly brackets and popular. All right, that's how I like to do it. And then export that will just rename this to popular and this to popular and it should work the same way there we go it does all right so do it like this it's nice and clean export lab popular pass down popular and then you have it available okay so basically what i want to do is do a loop over this so loop over over all the popular movies and then render out some html for them so let's try it out so Here's the way we do it. We add curly brackets and we say dollars, not dollar sign, hashtag each popular. So this is the array as movie. And this is basically the singular version of it. And then we need to close the each like that. All right. So basically this is gonna go over each movie, boop, 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 boop. And for each movie, it's gonna render out whatever we add in here. So in this case, I'm gonna just do, let's do movie, just movie. All right, so render out each individual movie. And look at that, boom, we have object, 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 object. And why is that? Well, it's an array of objects. So if we console log out popular up here and take a look, look at that, we have an array and it's a bunch of objects in here. 
Now, if we expand the object, we have a bunch of different properties that we can use, like adult, uh, the picture, the ID, the title of the movie, if it has a video, the vote average, and a bunch of other stuff. So let's say I want to access the title of this. So again, here we have access to each individual one, so movie. So we can just do movie.title, movie.title, and hit save. And look at that, boom, we're already halfway through it. Look at that, we rendered out a bunch of HTML. Dynamically rendered content, wow, is that even a real thing? Okay, so now rather than doing a H1 in here and bloating our file with a bunch of other information here, what I can do again is just create another component specifically for the movie. So let's go over to our components and I'm going to name the next one called movie card. New file, movie card dot svelte. Cool. So let's head over here. Let's just head over here back to popular movies and import it before we forget movie card from dot slash movie card. So let's import it and just render that out on the screen here. Movie card. Like that. Go to movie card and we'll just add a H1 called movie. Let's see if that works. So movie, movie, movie. Okay, but let's get back the same functionality we had before. So to do that, again, we can just pass down the movie here, right? Curly brackets, movie. So we can pass it down here and then we have it available in here. If we add a script tag and just do export let movie. Cool. So now we can do movie.name here, our title. And we should have it back to the way it was. And we do, look at that, yay. Cool, let me drink a bit of energy drink. Whew. This is craziness, isn't it? It's quite fun and simple. Okay, so let's add a little bit of styling and more information to this. So I'm going to remove that and just call this movie card. We're going to create a div like that. And in here, I'm going to have the image of it. So here for the source, I want to add the dynamic data basically from the movie. So the movie poster. Now, if you just add movie like this here, movie, or I should say movie dot backdrop or whatever it's called it's not gonna work uh, you're gonna need another url for that so just follow along with me do a https here slash slash image dot tmdb dot org slash t slash p slash and this is the width basically 500 and then here you can add a plus sign now and do movie dot poster path i believe yeah poster path like that and for the alt we can use the movie title so movie dot title and hit save okay so this is in the docs uh there's many other different they use this link specifically because you can resize it um they don't want to give you like the largest most original image and uh, that's going to eat up all your bandwidth so there we go, look at that. We have the images rendered out, very cool. All right, so let's go back here to our code. So now that we have our images, that's kind of the only thing that was weird that I had to find in the docs is that the poster path didn't work, but other than that, it should be fine. So next up, let's make a description diff here, and I'm gonna add a H2. We're gonna call this movie title. That should give us the movie title. And we're also gonna add the release date. So movie release date, like that. Let's take a look and look at that. Yay, it works. So next up, what I wanna do is do a bit of styling. So again, we can just go down here and just grab the image. Again, I don't have to worry about adding classes to everything and being worried about this image affecting any other components because of the scoping. So you can just kind of freehandedly do, do this. <laughs> oh, my fiance is being silly next to me. 
doing potato faces with a webcam. It is what it is. Okay. So let's grab. So what I want to do is actually lost my train of thought there for a second. <laughs> Everyone write it in the comments. Potato Max. Okay. So what I want to do is create a grid for all of this all of these movies. So we can go over to popular movies and just add a bit of styling to this first before we do each individual movie. So did I do any styling? I should do some styling to this. Let me just find this quickly. Popular. Here we go. Yeah. So it's going to be really simple. We're going to grab the H3, add a bit of padding to it. Zero and one rem. Yep. I need to add the style here. Paste it in there. So let's take a look at that. There we go. Perfect. Uh, and then go down here, grab popular movies. So we're going to do a display grid grid template columns. Again, this is just to make it nice and responsive auto fit min max 250 pixels one FR. I have a video on this. If you're interested in learning a bit more about CSS grid, grid column gap. We're just going to do one rem on this and then grid row gap two rem. All right. Now it's, it's not going to work because images are just an absolute nightmare to work with. And it's hard to figure out why they do things that they do, but we did add the grid. We're going to have to believe me on this one. Let's see if I go here, can we even see the grid section? Where is it? Popular movies should have a div in here. Where the div? Here we go. Popular movies. It has a grid on it. It's just not working the way it should work. Okay. So what we need to do is resize the images and make it all nice and responsive. So let me just make sure I also did not mess something up and I did auto fit here. Make sure you had a dash. Okay. Well, that was it. <laughs> Never mind then, but it's still broken. That's what I wanted to say. See, look at the text is on there. It's just images are a little bitch really. Uh, so to fix that, let's go over to movie card. Basically what I want to do is add a width 100 to them and just a smaller height to it. So width, whoa, width 100, whoa, why does it do that? Look at this slider tone <laughs> width. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, that's cause I haven't selected the thing image width hundred percent. Okay. Let's, let's look now. So that's better. We're getting there. That's not too bad. Uh, what we also need to do, I think I messed something up here. Yeah. So I need to add this, this movie card here. I should have put this description in the movie card. So let's copy this over from here and just add it next to the image in here. There we go. Cause it was sitting side by side. There we go. That's much better. But again, if I resize this, it's going to be it's just not going to work properly. The images are going to, oh, never mind. That's quite good. That's quite good. Actually, I just want to change the height of this to a specific one just to keep everything consistent. So height 30 VH, and I don't want to have that stretching issue. So I'm going to do object fit of cover. Okay. So now they're perfectly sized. And if the image gets small or big, it's going to just zoom in to not have stretching issues to it. So there we go. That's cool. Alrighty. So I also want to add a little border radius to this. I'll do one rem and I'll do a margin bottom of one rem and hit save. There we go. That's looking nice and fancy. I'll grab the H2s, do a font size of 0 0.8 rem or 0 0.9 rem. I'll grab the description. I'll do a height of 5 VH just for that. Uh, just to give it a bit more space. Let's grab the P tags. I'll do a font size of 0 0.6 rem. That's too bit bigger. 0 0.8, 0 0.7. I don't want this to be too small. I'm working on a big screen here. So I'm just going to do smaller font sizes. If it doesn't look good for you, 
just increase it, of course. There we go. I don't want to waste too much time on this, though, because it's boring stuff. Um, I do want to get the movie card. Uh, you yeah, know, we'll keep it like that. We'll stop with the styling. That looks all right. Um, OK, so there we go. I guess we could copy this over. I'm going to just do a cheeky copy paste. Here we go. Just a little display flex and a bit of padding on there to make it look nicer. If you want to copy paste that, feel free to do it. OK, so that's all the styling there. Uh, that's all the styling in our popular movies. So what we want to do now is basically, hey, click on one of these movies and navigate us to that movie's description. So if you go to the APIs again, the APIs, the docs of the movie database, you can find uh, basically a detailed view of each individual movie. Now, what is that called? I don't know. I forgot. So it gave me a moment till I look it up. So I think if you do movie here, it's going to pop open. Movie, let's see. Lower. Get movies, get details. I believe it's one of these. Uh, I'm going to copy paste it over anyway. So yeah, this is the one. So the movie, uh, db.org, movie slash, and then all you need to do is pass in the ID of the movie and your API key. Okay, and that's going to give you like all the information about that specific movie. So that's what we're going to do. So. Let me take a sip of Iron Brew. Not sponsored yet, but hopefully we will. Okay, so the question is, how do I navigate over to a page here? It's gonna be dynamic. So basically I want here in the URL to go over to movie slash blah, blah, blah. Okay, the ID of the movie, blah, 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 like that. How do I do that? Well, we saw that if we create a new page in the routes, that's going to take you over to like, if you do an about page, that's going to take you to slash about. But how do we do slash movie slash something else? Well, in the routes, we can create a folder and let's call this movie. So now any component you add in here. So if I call this uh, test.svelte, so now I can go over to slash movie slash test. And that's going to navigate me over to the test component here. So if I add the H1, Welcome to test and hit save. And look at that, works. Super simple. But in our case, we want this to be dynamic because every movie has a different number or, or maybe you want it to display a title here like Spider-Man, right? Okay, well, if I click on something else, it's gonna be Hawkman or something or Mike Hawk, Mike Hawk. Uh, so that's not gonna work, that's gonna error out. So if I go here, boom. 404. So to add a dynamic property to these uh, files, what you can do is remove test and add like an array. So what is it this called, baby? What? Square bra squiggly bracket, square bracket, square bracket, array, empty, array. empty array, square bracket. And then, uh, yes. Yeah, square <laughs> We've established well, a square. We said both, so you should know. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just add ID in here or whatever, anything else you want. I messed it up. So we add the curly brackets in here, ID, and just call this Velt. There we go. So now I can just add H1, hello. And now it doesn't matter. Okay, that's everything out. Let me close this up and reopen it. npm run dev. There we go. So it doesn't matter if it's test now or anything else. It's not going to error out. Let me save this. There we go. Um, it, anything you add here is going to navigate over to this page. Okay. So now what we can do, I'm just going to keep this hellos here. We can go over to our movie card, right? Because in here we can add a href basically to navigate over to this uh, page for us. So what we're gonna do is wrap this image with an anchor tag like that. So just add this anchor tag and wrap your image over it like that. And then for the href, what we're gonna do 
is remove the quotation marks. Actually, we can keep it. No, we'll remove it. We'll add the curly brackets and then add it. I'm going to say slash movie slash. And here I basically want to do a dynamic ID, right? Whichever we clicked on. Well, we have access to each individual ID because we're doing a for each loop here, right? We're looping to, through each individual movie. So, and we're passing it down as props in here. So here, basically this A tag has access to that specific movie that we click on. So I can just add a plus here and say movie.id. And that's, that's all we need to do. And yeah, we can hit save and we can give this a shot. So let's go back here. Let's go over to localhost 3000, click on this and look at that, it works. Boom, boom, boom. Cool, so that's quite simple, isn't it? It is. Okay, so we can close this up now. So now what we wanna do is get the details of of that specific movie. So we need to do another API request in the ID here. So what we can do is just kind of copy some things over from our index val. So this whole script module, because we're doing another fetch. So let's go back here, paste this in here. So we just need to basically modify our URL. So if you remember, I'll copy this over uh, and then show it to you. Where was it in the docs? Let me just go to the docs. Here we go. Copy that. And let's replace this. Oops, I'll do backticks. Do backticks before you paste it in. Backticks, paste. Okay, so HTTPS, API, the movie database. So it takes in the movie ID and an API key right here. So we have the API key. So I'm gonna copy that over. I'll just paste that in here. And what about the movie ID? How do we get that? Well, we can have it by accessing the parameters of the page that we're currently on. So we can actually extract this ID from our URL up in here, up in there. Uh, just add a comma and do params. So if we do a console log out of the params, you're gonna see console log params, and hit save, and go over to inspect in the Chrome browsers, go to console, let's do a little refresh. Uh, it's erroring out. Okay, it's erroring out because we're not returning any information. But anyway, we have access uh, of that ID by doing params.id here. I'm gonna show you what the params does in just a little bit. So now we can go here, here to the movie ID and I can just add a dollar sign here actually and replace this movie ID with params.id. And that's about it. So here, I can call this data await.res.json, that's gonna be fine. And here I can just do if res is okay, then return movie detail, like that. So why am I doing it this way? Well, I'm, I'm just doing movie detail here rather than popular data results because this is just, just gonna return an object in the end anyway, so movie detail. So return a movie detail object. And that's it, that's all we need to do. So it shouldn't error out anymore when we refresh. I was like, no, I still, I will error out. Uh, why is that? Oh, I should just say data, not movie detail. I thought I renamed this to movie detail. Let's refresh now. Okay, there we go, no errors, that's good. Console. So that's all good. So let's just do a console log of params and not params ID and do a refresh. And look at that. So is that it? That's not it. Oh, here we go. Params. So it returns us this and we have ID in there. So I'm just going to do params ID. Perfect. Cool. So let's hit that. Let's hit that. Let's save that. 
and then go down here. And again, we have access to this data down here. But again, I want it to be movie detail. So I'm just going to actually get rid of this console log and rename this to movie detail and just pass in movie detail here. There we go. Script. I don't want it to be export let data here. So I just do movie detail. Perfect. So now that we have that, let's just, let's just do a little movie details diff here. And I'll do an image container div and we'll just do an image and the source of this is going to be curly brackets again I'm going to do that https thing slash slash image dot tmdb dot org tp and remember here we did with 500 well you can get the original image which is the highest quality they have original and then we need to do plus movie detail dot oh, was it some backdrop backdrop path backdrop path okay cool and here again we can do movie detail dot title or something okay cool so we have our image in there and now after this image container down here we can add a text container and here we can just add the title of it. So again, you have access to that by saying movie detail dot title. Again, anything else you want to add, just go here and do a console log movie detail and you can e extract any information you want. So let's refresh this. So just open this up and whatever you want from here, just do movie detail dot overview dot original title, etc., etc. But look at that. That's gin ginormous. We're going to fix that. Don't worry. Okay, so let's get rid of the console log. So we have our movie detail. Let's add a paragraph in here. And we're going to call this p.overview. And we'll just do movie detail dot overview. And hit save. Okay, and then we'll do a p tag. Going to do span. Let's close up the span. I'll do release date. Close up the span. Let me hit enter here a couple of times to format this. So in here, I'll do movie detail dot release date. Release date. And then I'll do a break here. Another span. There's a couple more spans. I'll just copy this over, to be honest. It's going to be in the finished code because it's hurting my eyes. <laughs> Our little Shiba is biting the bone, so it's making a bit of noise. So I just have to move it a little bit. Okay. So let me just replace this whole overview section here, actually. Just so I don't waste, the, don't waste your time. There we go. Okay. So just kind of added more details in here and that's it and then for the styling as well I'm just gonna copy paste this just to make this video a bit shorter because it's these are the styles okay <laughs> just pause it and copy it over there's not much to add to it wow 15 minutes lovely and there we go look at that that's what we have cool looks nice and fancy now what if you want to do some global styles um really simple you go over to your source and just make a new file called global CSS or you can name it anything you want actually. So new file, I'll call this global.css like that. So in here, again, I'll just maybe import like a font, font family, get rid of the margins, add a bit of padding to the body. I don't need this. Let me remove that. And that's it. So you go over to your one of your root components like index felt and just do an import in here. And that's it. You're going to have styling working on all your pages. So go in here and we'll do, let's see, import global from dot dot slash dot dot slash. Oh, 
it was in the source global.css. I hit save. Let's see if that works. Let's go back here. And look at that, we have styling. Did that apply it? Let me see. Let me just make sure. I actually cannot tell. Yeah, poppins, there we go. Boop, 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 boop. So that's pretty much all it takes to, I, I just, I'm just looking to see where I added the, the styling. Ah, I know where I did. We haven't talked about layouts. Let's talk a bit about layouts. Wow, 50 minutes. I cannot believe I haven't talked about layouts. So what if you want to have like, uh, basically something that shows up on all your pages, like a default, like you would have your nav and footer and stuff like that, right? So you want that to be displayed on every page and you don't want that to be updated. So actually that would be a better place to put this import CSS in. So the way you do that is, let's go over here. So not in the routes, was it in the routes? Let me just make sure I have this nicely set up for you. Uh, yeah, in the routes, you can go over here and just do a new file and we're gonna do underscore underscore layout dot svelte. Super easy, uh, just create that. And in here, I'll do the script tag in here and import that global in, the global CSS. So let me just cut this from here and put it in here. Okay. And then we can create a nav, I guess, for it, but I'll just do a simple nav like that. And we'll do a UL li just to show you. Hello. Um, let's take a look. So there we go. Hello. It's there. Now the problem is it just renders out that component. As you can see, it doesn't render out your page anymore. Now, if you go over to movie ID, it still renders it out, which is nice. So what you need to do to fix this is to go down here and add something called a slot. All right. So basically this is where your, your pages will be injected into. So this will remain static and this will update to whichever page you're navigating to. So look at that. Hello. And then we can go anywhere else and that's going to stay constant. Okay. So again, if you want to add your footers and stuff like that, do it here in this layout. Cool. Let's go back here. And what you can also do is add this svelte head here like that. And you can add your SEOs in here. So if I want to do title of movie DB, that's going to show up in there like that movie DB. There we go. Let's readjust the bone again. There we go. So now what I want to do is just add a little navigation here, a nav bar. So again, I'll just go over to components, new, and we'll do a nav.svelte. All right, so for the nav, it's gonna be super simple. <laughs> again, you can add more to this. I'm just gonna do a slash, which is gonna take us back to the home screen, okay? Movie database. And here, I just basically did a display flex, added a bit of height to it, and positioned it to the center. Okay, so now let's import it in here nav from dot dot slash component slash nav and rather than this i'll just render out nav and hit save let's take a look look at that so now i can just easily navigate back and forth uh that's not updating so i might need to do a restart of the server so let's just run that and see um I kept the old version of it up so let's see if that fixes it there we go Okay, cool. So we can navigate back and forth. Easy peasy. Okay, so let's continue by adding a little search functionality over to our index.svelte. So I want it to be popped up right here in the corner um, and basically display the same kind of card style for searched movies. If we go to the docs, uh, you can find it. Uh, I think if you search query or something like that, or movies, get movies. I believe this is the one. Oh, let's see, just go over to try out and it should be here. So keyword movies. I think I found a similar one to this search movies. Here we go. Try out and we have API key should be a query somewhere. Search 
movie. Uh, it's one of these. I'll just copy paste over the the API um, whilst we're coding it out. But let's focus on making the input for now. So again, what I want to do is add it here in my index belt. So next to the popular movies above it. So we'll just make a new component for it. Search movies dot belt. Cool. So let's head over to that component. And in here, what I want to do is make a form. I'm going to get rid of the action. Just keep it like that. I'm going to add a class of search to it. And in here, what I want to do is just add an input type text. That's cool. And hit save. And I also want to add a button actually in here. Button that's going to say uh, search. And up here, I want to add a label that's going to say search movie like that. And let's hit refresh and I actually need to import it in the index felt. So let's import it. Import search movies from dot dot slash component slash search movies. And we're going to render it out up here. Search movies. Cool. So we should have it there. But what I want to do is make it nice and fancy and customize it a little bit. So let's add a bit of styling to it. I'm going to go down here. I think this requires a four. Um, yeah, let's add a four and do search movie like that. And we'll give this a name of search movie and hit save. Okay, so that gets rid of that little message there. And now let's go here and do a style. I'm going to grab the button. I'm going to just do a bunch bunch to it. I'm just going to do a copy paste over of this. Uh, so font size, we'll change the padding, background color, uh, font weight, get rid of the border, add a position absolute, bottom of 50, right of zero, height of one. Now, why am I doing all of this? Uh, well, I want the button that's here, as you can see, because we added the position absolute. But I want the search to have a position relative to it. So maybe that's going to make a bit more sense if I do this. So if I grab the search and do a position relative and add a width to it, like 30%, and the margin of one rem, this is what we have. Look, right there. Okay, so if I do an inspect and check the size of this, so form, there it is. Okay, cool. So now it's right there next to it. Um, and what I want to do is make that width, the input, the same width as the form. So if I do 100%, there we go. It's going to be the, at the end of it there. So again, all of this button thing is doing here is positioning it absolute and making sure it's at the end of the input here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to do some animations to it. So for the input, again, I'm just going to copy paste it over. I don't want to spend too much time on the CSS, but get rid of the border, do a font size of it, do a padding to it, uh, a transition. I'm going to transition the background color of it, add a bold background and some padding. Okay, so that's what we have now. That's really cool. And uh, let's see what else do I need to do. I think that's going to be it and then just fix up this button basically so let's see why the button is behaving the way it's behaving is it because of this padding let me get rid of that padding no so that padding is just left and right font size height 100 so maybe that form oh so the form again the label is out here so the form is actually this whole size here uh, so what I want to do is also move the label in here. So let's do that quickly. Uh, we'll grab the label. Again, I'm going to do a copy paste here because there's just so much styling. Again, just a position absolute to it. Top 50, left zero, transform translate minus 50. That's going to put it straight in the middle. 
and just remove the pointer events from it and add a bit of padding. So if we look now, so this is basically what we want to have, okay? So again, just kind of pause and copy paste this over. Um, don't really want to cover too much of this because we are, we're going to spend another 20 minutes on it. But again, this is what we have. We have the label in here and the button next to it. Cool. So let's actually focus on the functionality here. So what I want to do is get the input value. How do I get that? There's a super, super easy way to do it in, in Svelte. All you need to do is go over to your input. So here it is. And all you need to do is add a bind on it. So bind like that. And what I want to do is bind the value. So if you know in React, what you need to do is make a function, get the value in there, and then set the state's value in here to the value. But with Svelte, all you need to do is do bind value and set this equal to, and you can bind it to any variable that you create in your script tag up here. So I'm going to call this let, let's call this input value. All right. I set this equal to, initially I'll set it equal to nothing. So just an empty pair of strings. So again, we're binding the value here to this input value like that. And it just magically works. Buh, 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 buh. So if I try to render this out on the screen, maybe down here, so I can do h1 input value and hit save. Look at that. As soon as I start typing, that gets rendered out. And if we modify it, it just keeps it in sync. Cool. So that's it. Input value. So now that we have that, what I want to do is do a little animation here. So when I click on this, um, that's going to move away. Um, and when I have a value in here, I want that label to be up, moved up or disappear. Maybe the search as well. Once I start typing, I want the search to appear and I don't want that to be visible right now. So I'm going to create like a active uh, variable here. I'm going to set it equal to false initially. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. Um, basically, what I want to do is say, hey, if, if this is active, so if we're in the input, if we click on it, I want this label to disappear. So what we can do is here on the input, I can add an on focus. So when the input is focused, I can set this equal to curly brackets. I'm just going to run an arrow function in here. Now you can do a separate function here in the script tag, but this is just like a one line code. So I can just set active equal to true here. All right. So when we're focusing on this, set active to true. All right. From false to true. Cool. Uh, yeah. So how do I add the logic to this label to make this work? Super easy. We can do an if statement in here. It's kind of like the each we can add a hash. If, if it's not active, then render out the label like that. And then we can close it up like that. Okay. So hit save. So click and look at that, it disappears. So again, this is what this is the opposite of active. So it's false initially. So it checks if it's true, right? So if it's true, then render it out. If it's false, then don't. So there we go. The problem is when we click off, we never set it back to the original state of false. So that's on blur when the input's not focused. So on blur, we can set this equal to an arrow function again, and we can do active equals to false and hit save. So let's take a look now. Boop, 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 boop. Super nice. Now the problem is if I add text here and I click off, see it pops back there. So I'm actually going to make a new function for this uh, because it has a bit more logic in it. It's not just one line of code. So I'm going to call this cancel inactive. And what I just want to do is say, if there's an input value in there, input value, 
So if we have something in the input, then keep active true. And if there's nothing in there, then put active to false. And that's it. So I'll just copy and paste that in here now like that. Oh, not on the focus, on the blur. And hit save. Okay, so now if I click blah, 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 but if I have text in there, see, and click off, it's not gonna, it's not gonna pop back down unless there's nothing in there. So there we go. That's cool, huh? Now, same for the button. What I can do now is to, hey, make the search, uh, make the button appear if we have an input value. So we can do another if. If there's input value, then render out the button. If there's not, then just don't display anything. So there we go. Boop, 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 boop. Now we're going to animate this in nicely in a bit, but let's just hook up the log logic now. What we can also do is do a little animation, uh, like a CSS transition to this. So let me just go down here. Let me show you how we can dynamically add or remove classes. I can do an input dot selected here and just change the background color to something darker background and I'll do RGB 50, 50, 50. Okay. So how, how can I dynamically add this class to it? Well, we can go up here to the input and I can just add a class and say class equals to active. So if active is true, add the selected class to it, else add absolutely nothing. A ternary operator, I believe it's called, right? That's how simple it is. So if I click on it, look at that, it darkens it up a little bit and remove it. We can do an inspect element on this uh, if you want to see it. There we go. Selected. Selected. Done. Super nice. Super clean. All righty. That's going to be it in here. And now we can make a new page for the searched movies. So let's go to routes. So we have our movie and here we're going to make a new folder called search. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. A new file called id.svelte. Okay, so now we have to navigate to slash search slash whatever the ID is. Okay, so in here, again, we're gonna, I'm going to copy over this context module from any of the files and we're just going to modify it. Okay, so here's the URL that we're going to have for this. Um, so we'll add params here again. And we're going to replace this with this URL. Okay, so the movie API, the movie database, search movie. And we have the API key here. At language, en, us, and. And then we have a query here at query params ID. So basically what I want to do is every time I search for something, I'm going to add that name that we searched up in the URL. So slash search slash whatever the user searched for. So if we search Spider-Man, we're going to put Spider-Man up there. So that's where the params ID is coming from. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let me go back here. Params ID. Okay. So query params ID and then include this page include blah, blah, blah. Okay, you can find it in the docs uh, if you if you want to look for it. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So here at the end, we'll just return. We'll call this searched movie. Okay, and data the the results. It's gonna be the same thing that we're gonna get back. So that's cool. Okay, so now here, how do we how do we fetch that? So let's make a new function in here. Um, uh, and it's all going to make sense in just a bit, I promise. So let's make a function called submit function, submit search. Okay. So here, what I want to do is basically go over to, basically, I want to do a href, right? I want to href over to search slash and whatever the input value is, right? Plus input value, whatever the user searched for and the input. So that's going to go over to search input crap search here and whatever the user search. So let's say they search Spider-Man 
which is going to navigate over to the page we made here in the search and it's going to add the query here. Okay, so how do we do that? Because we don't have an A tag here. We basically want, like when this form gets submitted, navigate over to the page. So we can import something from Svelte called go to. Import go to from, then you can do dollar sign app.navigation like that. All right, so in this case, we can run like a navigation from a function. We don't need to have an A tag. So here, all we need to do is say submit search, go to slash search slash plus input value, whatever we add and in input, right? Cool. So now we can go on the form and say on submit, run this function on submit, run the submit search, submit search like that. I hit save. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So now let's say we search for inception and hit enter and look at that. It works search movie inception, but we get this weird page refresh and everything and the, the ghost twice there. So again, uh, the reason why that's happening is because a form submit does a page refresh. Whereas when we're working with these, um, JavaScript frameworks, everything is dynamic. We don't do any page refreshes. That's kind of one of the benefits and nice things about it. So what we want to do is basically, if you work with any JavaScript framework, you want to basically prevent this uh, default behavior of the form. So you, you, what Svelte has is actually a cool little thing here. You can go to the unsubmit and add a straight line like that, and you can add a prevent default to it. And there's all the other events that you can use, but this is the most popular one and that's going to stop it. So if I do Spider-Man and hit save, look at that navigates to search Spider-Man. So the go to here is working perfectly. All right. So we can do an inspect as well and see if that query is working for us. So let's go to ID here. Uh, da -da -da. So we're doing a params. And we get back an object here and look at that. We have a results with all the Spider-Man movies. Cool. All right. So that works. So that's it. That's just how simple it is. So what we can do now is just import the movie card and render that out here on the screen. So first off, let's go here and make a new script. We're going to import movie card from and just reuse this component slash dot dot slash component slash movie card and we can do we can also get the search movie here so our results export let search movie so it's available here for us and then we can just render it out here we can do searched movies like that and then in here we run another for each so each searched movie as movie. And then close up the each statement. And in here, I can do a movie card and just pass down each individual movie from the results. And that's all you need to do. Everything else is going to magically work. And I'm just going to copy over the grid that we made right here style. So it's pretty much the same copy paste uh, from the other popular movies. Okay. Search movies, display grid, and that's about it. Let's take a look, see if that works. Look at that. It does. Let's do another search. Let's do uh, Spider-Man hit enter and look at that. Click. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's do inception. That these don't have the, the URLs are not. This is depending on what they have in their database. But Bikini Inception, ooh, okay. My fiance is gonna kill me. She's gonna kill me. Um, yeah, everything works fine. Looks awesome. I guess what we can do is just let's do Matrix. Just make sure everything is good. Perfect. Uh, we can add a bit of animations to this. Hmm. Let me have a little sip. So you're going to love this because Svelte has integrated uh, animations in it and it's super simple. Let's do it with the search first. 
So let's head over to our search movies here where we have our labels and everything. And let's say I want the button to basically, or the label to slide in and out. Uh, yeah, to slide in and out. So we can go up here and import. There's a bunch of them. You can look it up on the internet. There's fly, slide, uh, fade. I'm just gonna keep fl fly, which is like a slide and opacity from svelte slash transition. Okay, cool. So how do we use this? It's gonna be so simple. You're gonna say, wow. So let's go over to the button or let's do the label first. And basically we have an in property and an out property. So when the label gets rendered, that's in and out is when it gets removed from our screen. So in fly, equal to double curly brackets. And then we can mess around here. I can do Y minus 10. I can add a duration to it to 500. I can do a rotation. I can spin it around. I'm just gonna move it down a little bit and fade it out. You don't need to do opacity here. Fly is already gonna fade it out for you. Okay, and that's it. And in is gonna be the same, but the opposite. So uh, out, sorry, is gonna be the same, but the opposite. Oh, actually the same. You can copy paste this over and just do out. Okay, so it's gonna move it down a little bit and fade it out. And the duration is 500 uh, milliseconds. So click and look at that. Wow, fades out magically. How cool is that? So you can just go over here, uh, do the same to the button if you want to. So on button, uh, I guess we could do the same. I guess we could just do a well, let's experiment here. Um, we'll do in here, in and out. Um, what if we keep this at zero? So we'll just fade it in. Okay. So that slides up, but it just fades in now. That's cool. And again, you can do slidings. So I can do X x so when it comes in i want it to move 20 like that see yep slides in like that that's cool okay just experiment with this uh there's quite a bit that you can do okay is that everything i wanted to add here yes it is cool and again you can do this with page transitions too, and it's just as easy. So let me show you how you can do that. So let's go over to the index here and I'll just import, let's import fly from svelte slash transition. Okay, so I can add this fly to the section again. So I'll do in, I want it to fly. I'll do a, let's set this equal to Y50, duration 500, and that's it. And let's do a out as well. Let me remove the comma there at the end. So in, out, duration 500, and we'll just keep this off actually. So when it transitions in, I want it to slide up. But when the transition's out, I just want it to fade out. Okay? So it fades out, but when it, we go back to the original page, see, it slides up. Cool. That's really cool. Um, so we can do the same to the other page. So I'm going to copy it over. Let's just do it for another one here. Uh, I'll go over to our popular. Again, you can add it to all of them. I'm just going to keep this short. I'll just pop it in here and then copy this over. Copy this popular. Here we go. I guess we could wrap this. Oh, not popular, my apologies. The pages, where is it? Movie ID here to the movie details, right? We can paste that in there, hit save, and then we can import it in here. So let me cut this from here. The popular movies to the movie ID. All right, that's it. Let's see. Click, 
boom. Now this pops up because it, they start at the same time. So what you need to do is actually add a delay uh, to the page uh, for it to wait uh, for the first one to fade in. So let's go over to index felt. And what I want to do basically when it, um, when it fades in here, I'll add a delay of the same amount and same in the ID here. Okay. So basically when this fades out, it takes 500 seconds, milliseconds, and this one has a delay. So it's going to take 500. So it basically syncs up nicely. So there we go. We have the delay here and now it's going to wait for that to finish and then it's going to start. There we go. Boo. So that's it. How nice is that? Now there's a weird error here, not error, but like if I click on this one, it's going to boop, scroll to the top. See, boop. So we can fix that if we go over to mm, our movie card. Here we go. And here we can basically add a svelte kit, no scroll. So now when we go down here, it's not going to jump. It's just going to nicely fade out and bring us back like that. We can also prefetch the data. So when we, when we hover over this, it's already going to start fetching uh, our API. And the way we can do that is going here and adding a svelte kit of prefetch. So that's going to start running as soon as we hover over it. Uh, it's going to start fetching it. See API fetch, API fetch. How cool is that? And there we go. That's kind of the gist of it. Uh, hope you enjoy this. Again, I'm going to do more stuff with Svelte. It's going to be really nice, but I want to keep this under two hours because it's, but look how fast you can build stuff out like a full on little project in just a couple of literally an hour and a half, you can get something up and going. So hope you enjoy this. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out all the courses that we have on developedbyed.com. The ultimate JavaScript animation course, our favorite one, uh, is still on discount for a little while longer. So it's going to be in the description. Check it out and I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye bye. Oh, just very quickly. I forgot something. I forgot the environment variable. So let me just show you how you can do that. So all you need to do is go to your, just your root folder and just do a dot env and in here basically you need to do a vite underscore whatever name you want just make sure you have vite here and then you set it equal to your api key and that's it and then uh where you want to use this is uh let me go over to the index so in our case it's index that's where we're doing a fetch so up here, right? And you can use that uh, like this. What is this? Get all dirty from scope. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let me get rid of this. So you can use it with import.meta.env.vite underscore API. Okay, whatever name you gave it. So you can basically take this API key out here. Ugh, okay. There we go like that. And you can replace it with, I'll do backticks here actually. And then oh, I had backticks already. Okay. Dollar sign curly brackets and paste that in there. Okay. So import meta env vibe. Now it's not going to work. You need to do a restart of this, uh, run that. There we go. And if we check now, it should still be fine. Okay. That's it. That's all I wanted to add to this.